Hey, what is up, YouTube boxing family? It is K Raz seven four three five. We back at it once again um, with another good boxing video. I wanted to talk about Mister Frank Ghost Martin, uh, rising up and coming lightweight contender. Uh, I believe he is 15-0 with 13 knockouts, if I'm not mistaken. But, uh, yeah, let's talk about a man. Uh, Frank Martin just got a brutal stoppage or brutal knockout victory over uh, Romero Duno. Uh, very, very amazing fight. It pretty much shows Frank he's ready for the high level. Um, some people want to say he's, uh, he's, he's too green, he's a prospect, blah, blah, blah. I don't I don't agree with prospects in boxing. I don't I don't see that, you know, argument being very uh consistent. The reason why that I say that is because um prospects really don't exist at all in sports. You are a professional athlete at the end of the day. So no matter what people say about you, you are still contending to become a high class athlete. So no matter what you do in your career as a boxer, boxing does not have certain rankings that you get up to to be clarified as a prospect or a contender. Because why would you have amateur fighting to begin with to call them prospects, but then the minute they come into the pros, they are still a prospect knowing that they are a professional fighter. You're, you're fighting to be the best fighter of your division. So, therefore, you can't say to me that the sport of boxing has certain classification rankings where you have to subjectify certain fighters to be a contender, to be a prospect, or to become a world championship level fighter. Otherwise, the sport itself does not make any sense to go by that level of logic. But either way, Fran Frank Martin is a, I will say, he is a up-and-coming veteran level lightweight contender. Um, he, he is definitely ready for the big dogs. I think Frank Martin, the way he fights, the way he's been developing, extremely fast, by the way. Um, he, he has taken out some decent names. He took out Tyron Lucky. Uh, not a good fighter. I mean, he got his ass knocked out by some really good fighters. Um, I remember he got knocked out by, uh, oh man, I, I want to say, was it Brandon... Brandon Lee? No, that that was Samuel Tia, by the way. Yeah, that that was Samuel Tia. My bad. But uh, Brian Favela, I think I know him too. Yeah, I I seen this guy get knocked out before. Yeah, December eleventh. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, Tyrone Lucky, he's a gatekeeper. He's not he's not really doing anything special. But uh, no, I mean, you know, the most notable wins that we could see here is Ryan Kilzeski that gave Gabriel Flores Jr. some problems. He gave him a lot of problems, actually. He actually tagged him. And, you know, little did Ryan did not know he should have stopped him. I don't understand why he didn't do that. But Ryan Kilzeski is a huge win. Jerry Pear is undefeated fighter. I I've heard some things about him. He is 28. Uh, yep, he had O kills. Yeah, he hasn't really fought anybody good either, but, I mean, yeah, a great win. I actually remember this fight, by the way. I, I, um, um, I remember that, uh, Frank, yeah, that Frank actually knocked his ass out, but, yeah, great win. Uh, I would say the, uh, the biggest wins ever are, are these, you know, three, um, opponents. Uh, Romero Duno, great name, great victory. And Ryan Kilzeski, great name, great victory. And J and Jerry Perez, uh, these are good step up builder fights. But Frank Martin says something very interesting the other day. He says he wants Devin Haney. So let's talk about it. Um, I think Frank Martin, he's ready. Uh, like I would say, whatever is next for Devin Haney's career, if he can't get the undisputed fight with um. George Cambosos Jr., maybe he should try going after Frank Martin. Maybe, like, maybe him and Frank Martin could have a, you know, like, an all-black American fight card type of shit, and maybe it could be on pay-per-view. I, I actually wouldn't mind Devin Haney and Frank Martin being, like, a co-main event to, like, a big name like Tank Davis or maybe EJ and Ugas, which that that's awesome, but... 
Um, as far as, like, from what I've heard, De Devin did say he is planning on moving up to 140 if he can't give the George Cambosos fight. So, I don't, I don't see why Devin can't do that. I think Devin's just waiting on what Josh Taylor, um, is gonna do. But, I don't see why he would want to wait for that. Because, if he does do that, that's gonna be a bad look on him. Because, if Teofimo, if he's planning on getting his fight in with, uh, Montana Love then that means Tia Female, he'll be next in line to try to go for any of those sanctioned bodies first. And then, you know, Devin basically is going to be in that same position where he's going to be waiting on some big fights at 135 that that is not going to happen. And then on top of that, he's trying to force himself to be fighting at 135, you know, when we clearly know that uh, that's not going to happen. Um, I, I, I truly believe De Devin Haney needs to stop Fighting at 135, because, you know, he's grown, like, obviously he's grown extremely fast, and, uh, I don't see what else is really here to do. I mean, yeah, you could fight Michelle Rivera, you could fight any of these guys in the top 25, but on top of that, it's like, you know, that doesn't really mean anything. Like, I know Devin Haney wants to get undisputed, but I, I, I like... Like, I truly believe George Cambosos, he's going to duck. And Devin, he's going to be put in a bad position. So, I think Devin should, should just uh, vacate and just move up to 140. Because uh, knowing like knowing that Devin really wants Undisputed and I want it uh, basically made for him too. Like I, like, I want Devin to get this fight in with George Bumbosos. Um, I just think that... You know, the way the political structure is being held against them, uh, Devin, Devin really needs to just get up out of there. But, who knows? I mean, if, if Devin still wants to stay, which I don't see him staying for that much longer, it's not like his body is looking good every time he fights at 135. You know, his physicality is, you know, looking way too drained and, and out of shape for 135. But... If he's able to still stay there with a little bit of time left, try to try try to go for somebody credible. I would like to see a Frank Martin fight. I think Frank Martin is a great opponent. I think he'll give Devin a lot of problems because Frank Martin is a very schooled southpaw. Um, he has power and and he could also hard pressure Devin to the body. Um, I think I think that's a big flaw that Devin hasn't shown yet. His his body. Uh, his his body punch um, resistance output is like really bad. Um, I can I can easily see Devin getting immobilized to the body early, and I don't see Devin scaling well against a southpaw that knows how to hit and knows how to out counter him and out read him. But if Devin can pass that test, I think a Frank Martin victory over him would be a very very tough extremely well-schooled fight knowing that frank has not been 12 rounds before but he has fought 10 rounders if i'm not mistaken it's not a bad fight because if you kind of think about it frank martin he has a lot of experience in with Derek james he trains with ej he trains with you know jamel charlo he trains with those guys so you know, I don't, like, I don't see why this fight can't be made, you know, if anything, it, it's better for, you know, black American fighters to grow together, and then on top of that, it, um, it scales better for both of their resumes, you know, regardless of who wins, so, obviously, you know, all the Devin Haney, you know, protectors, you know, obviously want to say, Oh well, De Devin Haney don't uh don't need to fight him. You know this guy ain't got no belt, so Devin Devin Haney just needs to fight George Cambosos. But you know if we're gonna be realistic here, George George Cambosos like like nine times out of ten he's probably gonna duck Devin Haney. I don't see why Devin Haney would ever get that fight unless the WBC or any of those sanctioned bodies, uh, like whether the IBF, WBA, or WBO, if they can mandate Devin to be a force mandatory to George Cambosos, I'm all for it. Because if Devin can do that, it makes all the sense in the world to do that. Because if Devin could try to at least get a title unification for one of those belts and George Cambosos decides to duck, at least it's better 
for him and 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 he has more leverage over George Camboso. So I don't know, man. I like I like like to me, I would really hope that Devin Haney can get that fight in with George Cambosos because it's a well needed fight for the lightweight division. Because if George Cambosos is gonna pull the same, you know, dog tricks that Tiafimo did to uh Devin Haney, uh uh that's very bad news and uh that's not good for his career. And George Cambosos knows he's gonna lose uh he's gonna lose very soon anyway. And, you know, I would really hope it's not somebody like Frank Martin that's going to be on the come up about to beat his ass. But let's take a look at the 135 pound of, uh, like, you know, boxing rankings. Um, yeah, for for lightweight. And I'm sure Box That Lives, um, I'm pretty sure Box That Live, they can give us the proper rankings if they can. But. I'm pretty sure Frank Martin, he is up there. He's not that far away. And it would be nice to see where we can, you know, see the political landscape of the lightweight division. <sighs> All right. So right now we have, um, uh, come on, come on. All right. We got. Who we got? Who we got? That, this is the ring, by the way. So we're not going to focus on that. All right, we got George Cambosis Jr., uh, WBO champion. We have Vasil Hightech Lomachenko, Teofimo Lopez. Uh, we're going to forget about him. He's not uh, He's not in the picture anymore. Dennis Baranchik or, or Baranchik. Angel Fierro, great opponent, by the way. Suchiro Yoshino. Uh, William Zapata. Francisco Patera, Gary Cully, Gustavo Daniel Lemos, Michelle Rivera, number 10. What the fuck? Jacob Nick, I don't know who the hell you are. Uh, Richard Comey, number tw 12. Hironori Mishiro, 13. 14, Isa Chaniev. And 15, uh, Jesus Eduardo Saracho. So, that's our 15 for the IBF. We have Gustavo, Gustavo, De okay, the IBF number one vacancy is open, but number two is Gustavo Daniel Limos, I'll call him Limo Demos, uh, Lee Selby, uh, Richard Comey, Vasil Hightech Lomachenko, Tio, nah, fuck him, he's not there. I don't know why Richard Comey is number four when he just lost to Lomachenko, so, if anything, <coughs> Richard Comey and... Yeah, yeah, Lomachenko and Michelle Rivera should be three and four, by the way, or at least four and five if we're gonna be, you know, consistent. Uh, Dennis Biernchek, Jacob Nig, Zaur Abdulalev. I don't know why the hell he's number ten. Maxi Hughes is, is number eleven. Sichuro Yoshi. Okay, who? Okay, who the hell cares? All right, Isaac Cruz. He dropped out of the rankings. Wow. After losing to Tank? Whoa, that's crazy. Alright, so so for the WBC, we have Lomachenko, Ryan Garcia. What? Are you kidding me? Ryan Garcia? That's sad. Zao Abdulalev, Jorge, Le Jorge Linares, Richard Comhe. <laughs> Knowing that he lost, he should have been out of there. Ivan Mendy, Emmanuel Tago. Javier Fortuna, Masayoshi Nakatani. Why is George number 10? That that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> okay, Michelle Rivera, Francisco. Okay. So, we don't see Frank Martin anywhere. He he's not Okay, he Frank Martin's number 13 by the WBA. Okay, thank thank God. At least at least we got him. But we got Rolando Romero for the for uh, 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 this is for the uh, WBA rankings. Uh, Rolando Romero, we have uh, Michelle Rivera, we have Jorge Linares, we have Vasil Lomachenko, Mizel, Miguel Vasquez. No, uh, f uh, forget about Tiafimo, Roman Adriv, Jezreel Corrales, Isa Cruz. He should be number eight over Jezreel Corrales. That actually might be a good fight to make. But, um, Jesus is Eduardo Serracho, Serracho Bacho, uh, William Zapata, Gary Cully, Frank Martin, 
And Guame Frenwa, which he's not that good. He's gonna get yeah, yeah, he's gonna get stopped. Sichuar Yoshino. Yeah, nothing so far, man. But I guess uh yeah, that's about it. Nothing interesting. But uh yeah, actually let's talk about the one hundred and thirty pound ranking. Uh by the way, Abraham Nova, he's fighting January fifteenth, just to let you guys know, along with a lot of other talent, which I'll be talking about that very soon. Uh, on another video. AB is number three, by the way. For for any of y'all that are from uh, Puerto Rico or from Albany, New York, that want to know about that, he's number three by the WBO. That's crazy, though. Archie Sharp, he's number one. How how the hell is he number one? Yeah, yeah, Muhammad uh, Yakubov, he's number two. Lamont, number, uh, number four. Joe Noe, number five. Mark Irvinoff. Jamel Herring, Albert Bell. Man, that's crazy. Albert Bell, he's number 8. Damn. Xavier Martinez, he's number 15. Wow, that's crazy, man. But yeah, if, if you guys want to take a look at these quick little rankings, that's very interesting. Um, Shazuka Rakimov, he's actually number 1. So he's probably going to face, yeah, Kenichi Ogawa. Because him and uh, Fazinga Uziel, you know, were going to fight each other. And yeah, yeah, Zinga, he got his ass knocked out. Um, he's actually out of the rankings, so that's very interesting. Oshaki Foster, he's number two, by the way. So hey, maybe Oshaki and yeah, Burchell, they could probably fight each other. But I think, uh, but I think uh, Miguel Burchell, he's gonna probably move up to one thirty-five. I could see that happening. But for the WBA, we have uh, wow, the WBA is va vacant f for the Super Belt, but. Yeah, Roger Gutierrez, he's the number one guy champion. So Chris Colbert, yeah, he's probably going to face him. And then Xavier, he's number four by the WBA. And yeah, wow, that's crazy. Then at Featherweight, we have Navarrete. He's a WBO. There's Mark, there's Mark, there's Mark uh, Maxayo that's going to fight Gary Russell. Damn, that's crazy, man. That is, that is absolutely crazy. Brian Chevalier is number seven. Joette, number five. Man, dude, look, the rankings are definitely moving up high. Mauricio Larry, he's number three, so who knows? I could definitely see Luis Alberto Lopez uh, beat the living crap out of um, Kiko. Because, I mean, if he's going to go down to one, like, you know, like 126 and, you know, whoop his ass, and, yeah, by all means, you know, go for it. But then again, these rankings are subject to change, so, you know, like, we really don't know what's going on. But then on top of that, why is Abraham Nova fighting uh, Jose Enrique Vivas? That that makes no sense. But I guess if he's closer to the world title, he'll shut up. Um, I guess he'll probably take it. But yeah, that's pretty much what I have to say. I just wanted to give you guys the update with Frank Martin. Um, I think this fight would be a good fight to be made in the future. Um, who knows what will happen? I think Devin's going to probably move up to the next weight class by that time frame so i don't i don't see why devin can't make the fight with uh frank martin if he can't get a fight in with uh with uh george cambosos but um if that is something that could happen by all means i am down for it so yeah let me know what y'all think um that's pretty much what i have to say and i hope you guys enjoyed i'll see you guys later bye